Hey everybody, welcome back. We need one of those, um, we need like one of those air horns, like do, 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 you know, to really, to really hype it up because I'm not, I don't bring enough hype just by myself. Uh, good to see everybody back here again at uh, Nearbound at Work, which we do every Wednesday, normally every Wednesday at noon. We actually are not going to be doing one next week. Um, so we'll be skipping that one, but we've got uh, every Wednesday at noon, Eastern time. We're back here again. And uh, today is a lot more producty, diving into the product a bit to really showcase this kind of a bundle of features that we call Reveal Engage that were released over the last couple months and are sneaky, sneaky powerful. Really, really great way for sales teams and partner teams to learn to love each other and work together effectively in ways that are easy for both. So you're not to, you know, asking your sales team to go jump around to different platforms or do things that are not part of their normal flow, but that you're also bringing the information that they need into the accounts that they're already working, the deals that they're working, where they can tap partners and run those nearbound sales plays. So really want to get into the weeds of the product itself, which is why I've got Sally here, because that's her area of expertise. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to you, Sally, and I will let you take over from here. I'll just be here as the sidekick and let you run with it and uh, introduce everybody to Reveal Engage and how to utilize it. Awesome. Thank you, Isaac. Hi, everyone. I'm Sally. I am um, a product marketing and go-to market manager here at Reveal. I just had my two-year anniversary, so I'm, I'm part of the furniture here now. I'm super excited to be here, so thank you so much for having me on. Um, like Isaac said, I'm going to go through Reveal Engage. It's really a way to help your team, your partnership and sales team collaborate better together and also to work hand in hand with your partner teams as well on the other side. So I will share my screen. Um, Isaac, please let me know if, uh, if you can see it. Could be, could be helpful, I guess. And then I'll give a, so I'll run through a couple of ideas and ways that you can use Reveal Engage. Um, and then I'll also go and give a product uh, walkthrough to show you how the flow works as well. So I'm not seeing the screen yet. There we go. Um, I'm very slow. I'm technologically challenged, but here we go. Um, so, so here we go. Here's a little bit of a diagram, but Reveal Engage is all about the right process that's getting the right info to the right people at the right time, essentially to achieve the goal of boosting partner revenue. So here we've got a cute little diagram, and it's basically showing that your partnership team, your sales team, and your partner's partnership team and partner's partner sales team are all interrelated. So there needs to be a lot of collaboration um, to make sure that you're both going forward and achieving uh, partner attached revenue and, and things like that. So... Um, I think I'm not going to be saying anything too too new to everyone. I feel like everyone is is pretty across Nearbound at this stage. And hopefully you've also taken a look at the um, Nearbound sales blueprint, which is a super great read if you haven't taken a look. But basically what I've thought about is how can we relate Reveal Engage to our um, Nearbound plays and things like that. So basically from here, there are three things um, in the Nearbound plays. We've got the three eyes of Nearbound. So here we have Intel, Influence, and Introductions. So for Intel, it's really understanding what's happening on your prospect side. So what is the procurement process, the political landscape, who holds the buying power? Then we've got Influence. So how can we leverage our partners' relationships with our prospect to get them to sign with us? or to get the conversation moving. And then the third eye of, of Nearbound is really building trust with prospects by using warm introductions from our partners. So if we focus now on the Intel part of things, so Intel is really about targeting the right person with the right message. So here we have a few different um, reveal tools in Reveal Engage that we can use. Um, so basically what we want to be doing is looking at who is a, um, who from our prospect, um, which of our partners are already working with them. So which of our partners already have them as a customer or have an open deal that's currently going with them. Something else that we can take a look at um, to get intel is also uh, what are the contacts that my partner has with this company. So here on Reveal, on your 360 mapping, 
You're able to click and see your partner presence. You're also able to see on account mapping and things like that if your partner has contacts in common with you on that account. So here it's really great, firstly, to see contacts that you have in common. Okay, I'm targeting the right person, but also does my partner know people at this company that I don't yet have a relationship with? Can I get intel on them? Are they the person that has the most power, the most buying power at the company and things like that? There, there's um, a, a couple uh, just things I want to pause here that I think is really subtle but important that allowing your sales reps to be focusing on the accounts that they want to focus on and then seeing the partner presence in those accounts versus the process often goes in reverse where partnerships people are like, hey, here's where all the partners are. You should be working on those accounts. And sales people are like, leave me alone. So just having that um, you know, being able to put put them right there, and then you can see the widget on the bottom right, where in Salesforce or in HubSpot, seeing that right in the account. Hey, here are the partners involved. It, it, an interesting stat, by the way, last year from when we looked at across our platform, of all of the uh, new opportunities open, forty percent of those there was a partner uh, who had that account as a customer already. So the odds are very, very high that the prospects your sales team are working with, one of your partners has that as a, has that pro company as a, as a partner. I mean, sorry, as a customer. So like it's sitting there, it's already there in your ecosystem with the Intel in the very least. And this is really about pushing it to those sales reps in a way that, that hits them right where they are. Sorry, continue, Sally. No, exactly. That's a, a really great point. Thank you. Thank you for raising that. Um, but, but yes. Um, so Intel is also often um, at the beginning of the relationship uh, with a prospect. You might be trying to gather as much information so that you can target them with the right messaging and get to the right person. So here's something else that's quite valuable is um, the weekly digest that we send out. And so for your sales users on Reveal, they'll actually get for the accounts that they own, they will get updates every Friday telling them, okay, um, a new opportunity has been opened on this account with this partner, or my partner has closed a deal on this company. So you have that information that is super valuable for you to know on your prospects, what's happening on their world. And it also gives you an idea into the tech stack. So if my prospect has now signed a deal with my partner, okay, they're using that tool now. That's really helpful information. So when I go to them with my pitch, or I reach out to them, I'm giving them uh, valid use cases on how they can use our tools together. And, and, and the like timeliness that. component is huge. One of the things we talked about in one of the sessions with Jared was when you're looking at which partners to tap into for these plays, the most valuable are usually those who within the last couple months have closed the deal with that account because they are the, the right. The person who closed that deal is likely still working there, still has the information, remembers it. It's fresh versus someone who, you know, was a year ago, they don't remember. So seeing, hey, they exactly. just became a customer of one of my partners like this week. That's a really great time to be able to, exactly. hey, congrats. I saw you got them as a partner. would love to tap you for some intel, bringing that timeliness. Exactly, exactly. And then, of course, the, the best way to get intel on your, on your prospects is actually to have a discussion with your partner's team. So as a sales rep, um, what you can do is you can use the get intro functionality directly from your widget in Salesforce or HubSpot, and you can um, send a message to Slack, and you can collaborate directly with the sales rep on the other side. So it's called get intro, but it's essentially, we, we should call it a nearbound play button here. Um, so you can definitely use it to get intel on your accounts. And it's a really great way to get a direct link to the sales rep and the, the team on your partner's side to get that information that's helpful for you. Can I ask you a question, Sally? On the partner manager side, um, is there the ability to control which partners show up in that widget or which order they show up in? Yeah, definitely. So something that is quite a recent release, actually, um, but it's possible for Salesforce and HubSpot, you can choose which partners are displayed in the widget. So it might be useful just to show your co-selling partners, or maybe if your partner um, hasn't fully signed on with your partnership agreement, you might want to hold off on showing that to your sales team. So you can definitely choose. Um, and you can also choose for get intro, uh, where that intro or that that request for intel or influence goes to um you can choose for it to go to an internal channel a shared slack connect or via email to the partnership owner as well love it great question cool 
All right, next we can move on to influence. Um, so influence is really about leveraging your partner's relationship with your prospect or the account that you're focusing on. So here, um, what we can focus on, specifically when you're looking at the widget, but you can also do this directly on Reveal, is you can actually see the length of time that your partner has been working with that company. So here you can look at the status and you can see that um, these partners have these accounts, this same account, sorry, as a customer, but they have it for different lengths of time. So it's very handy to take a look at the customer for X amount of time. And the typically the longer the relationship, the more trustworthy the relationship is. So here, when you're looking for your partner to influence your prospect's decision making, the longer the relationship that they have together, the more likely they'll be able to influence and um and help them to understand the value prop and, and engage with you as well. So here specifically, get interest to Slack. It's, it's really great for this. The widget is super awesome to look at um, the length of time that your partner's been working with a company, but also specifically for partnership managers. So that's mainly for sales. But for partnership managers, it's also great to uh, work on getting influence on accounts by sharing your pipeline with a partner. You can comment and write to each other um, and you can ask them for information. You can ask them to name drop and things like that. And then next time you jump on a meeting with your, with your contact on your partner's side, you can go through the list of accounts that you flagged to your pipeline. So super helpful here. Sally, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, Isaac, why don't you just pay more attention in these product <laughs> update meetings that we have internally? Uh, these are, these are somewhat for me, but also for people here. So um, where you can see, uh, you know, people who are customers, if the account is a customer of your partner, can you see if they are a partner of your partner or does that status not exist? At the moment you can't on the widget, but you definitely can in reveal. So reveal itself, we use reveal, of course, which is great. Mm -hmm. We, we drink our own champagne. Um, but you can definitely see the status on reveal for prospect, customer and partner as well. So if yeah. it's useful for you to be looking at your partner's partners, because you know that they'll be able to help you influence deals, you can definitely look at that specifically on 360 degree mapping. Appreciate it. Good question. We, in the U S we say, eat our own dog food. It's a lot less, uh, appealing. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of low brow over here. We're in France. So. <laughs> um, cool. And then we've got the last eye of, of the near bound play, which is introductions. So here, basically, um, when your partner is already working with an account, um, if they can make a warm introduction, the account's probably going to be more recept receptive receptive um, to the introduction because they already know and trust the person who's making that intro. So here, definitely leverage your partners that are already working with your prospects. Um, and some things that you can take a look at are partner presence, of course, which partners already have this account as a customer or an open opportunity. Um, you can also take a look and see what contacts you have in common. Um, maybe your contact has been uh, ignoring you for whatever reason. And you can see that your partner is already working with that contact and you can say, hey, can you introduce me or something like that, send an email, intro me. Um, you can also take a look and see um, specifically on Salesforce in the widget, but you can also do this directly on Reveal. Does my partner have contacts there that I don't have? So here, these are contacts not in common, and that can be really useful to see who is my partner working with on this account that I don't yet know. So here, GDPR reasons, we don't share the name, email address, and things like that. But you can see the job title, which is just as useful. And you can ask your partner to make an intro there. So here, the main tools to use, of course, would be get intro to Slack, which is part of Reveal Engage, but also sharing your pipeline with partners. For people on the free plan, um, you can do this. And you can ask for introductions and write comments to each other. So super useful, even on the freemium version. Um, and then in terms of, I just had a couple of best practices. Uh, Real Veal Engage is uh, developing more and more. So we're making iterations, but for what we have now, we've already found a bunch of successes. And some of the best practices that we found are um, 
use get intro to Slack. If your sales team are using Slack, it's really helpful them for them to have that information and to collaborate directly with the partnership team on Slack without having to work on a different platform. It also gives a lot of um, visibility and helps with accountability with uh, taking actions when you need help on something. The second best practice would be to leverage Pipeline. So whether you're a paid client, a free user, you can use Pipeline. Track the accounts that people need help with. Um, you can share your pipeline with a partner, add comments, use deal stages to keep track of, of discussions that are happening there. Um, the next best practice would be our weekly digest. They're super powerful. It's putting interesting information every Friday in their inbox that they can leverage as it happens. So you can see every week all of the changes happening on your accounts or with the partners that you favorited. Um, something else that I would recommend is Add tags to your partners on Reveal. Super helpful. You can see in partner analytics um, and other bits of the platform, you can see these tags. So you can add maybe a tag for the tier of partner. So tier one, two, three, gold, silver, or bronze. Um, so people can see whether it's a partner that they might be able to prioritize first. You can also add the type of relationship that you have. Maybe it's a co-sell partner. And... Reveal also does this ourselves. We drink our own champagne again. So we have tags on all of our partners and our sales team use those tags to help them identify which partner they might be able to leverage for Intel, um, intros or influence. And then also make sure you're giving visibility to your team. So here, when they ask for help and you speak to a partner, whatever the outcome is, make sure you tell them, yeah, sure, they'll make an intro via email or you know what? now is not the right time, but maybe they might be able to intro you to a different contact or something like that. Just make sure you give visibility because it'll help the sales team um, to keep using that same process going forward. Sally, I'm curious on the uh, Slack Connect. So, you know, the idea of being in Salesforce and saying, hey, I want an intro and that popping into a, let's say a shared Slack channel between you and the partner. What is the, is it typically a shared Slack channel that the partner managers from both uh, companies are in, and then it pulls AEs in kind of one at a time as they want those intros, or is that, because I know you have like multiple handoffs here, and what have you seen be the most effective or successful for teams using this? Is it letting AEs talk AE to AE, or is it usually yeah. going through the partner managers? That's a really good question, and it's very um, case by case. So we have a whole bunch of our, our clients that are using it with Slack Connects with the partner because they don't want their partnership team to be the gatekeepers. They don't want to be bottlenecks for all of these requests. They want their sales team to be empowered to ask for help and to give help as well. And so in that case, they'll have a Slack Connect and the sales reps can discuss directly from the, the message that goes on Slack. Um, so that works very well, but not everyone has that relationship with their partners. And not everyone wants their sales reps talking to each other for whatever reason. So you can also, um, we're seeing a lot of people that connected up to an internal Slack channel that just has their whole revenue team or maybe just their AEs and their partnership team. Um, and basically the partnership manager, so the person who owns the relationship with the partner will assess and decide on the next steps. So they'll be the one who copies and pastes it onto the Slack channel with the partner or sends the email, but it, it really depends. And then for some partners, you may not want it going to Slack. It might not be the right time or things like that. So it really depends. Um, but typically, if you have a close relationship with your partner and you're both going towards the same goal, which is to help each other to source and influence deals, then most of the time they are encouraging their sales reps to collaborate directly on the shared Slack channel. Yeah. I love it. That's definitely kind of the, the ideal if you can get there. Um, I would love Sally, I don't know if you're going to, you're going to get to this, but when you mentioned the pipeline, I'd love to see, um, pipeline and tags as well, kind of see that on the platform and how people can use that most effectively. Yeah, definitely. I will share my demo, my demo account on reveal. So now we should be seeing reveal. So when I talk about tags, these are shown directly on the partner tile here. And you can add tags just by clicking on the plus symbol and you can add them here. So if you have something, uh, you, if you want to add a tag and it's not yet created, you can type it in and click on add and it will add there. Um, you can also add it from the partnership overview here. You can add it directly. 
and tags are visible on the analytics dashboard here. So you're able to filter all of your partners. So if you're a partnership manager and you focus on um, a specific region, you can add a tag for a region and then you can filter all of your partners by region by the tag. You can also filter, like I said before, by the tier of partner and also the relationship that you have together. You might also want to add a tag like um, early, early partner. So maybe the relationship is not so strong yet. You just let your sales team know and the rest of the partnership team know that. So that's what you can see directly on um, reveal. And then also when you go into Salesforce, for example, if you click on the partner name, you're able to see the tags here. So your sales team are able to see that directly on Salesforce and they can also see the same thing. If I go to HubSpot, you're able to see the tags that you've added in the HubSpot um, CRM widget as well. Love it. So there are and, tags. And, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And pipeline? That was it. Exactly. So Pipeline is a really powerful tool um, that I wish more people use because it's really great. So Well, let's get them using it. Use Pipeline, everybody. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really cool. It's, a, it's got a lot of different use cases. But here, for example, if I go into Pipeline, I can filter by specific partner. I can also filter by um, the way that the item has been added to my Pipeline. So if I'm a partnership manager and I want to track all of the get intros that have been sent and I want to follow up on them and just make sure, okay, back in our Salesforce, um, we've had uh, three deals closed in the last two weeks. I'm going to check on get intro. Has Was there a get intro? Yes, there was. Is this partner flagged? Um, this relates back to attribution, which is something that we're working on already at Reveal. But if you already are tracking this in, in your Salesforce or your HubSpot, you can take a look at your pipeline. You can filter for category is intro request. You can also see the ones that you've added um, from the weekly digest or added from 360 mapping for partnership managers. And you can filter by basically anything here. So you can filter by um, the internal comments, owner, and things like that. And basically from here, if I choose a specific partner, I can actually share my pipeline with my partner. So now Levenue is able to see all of the accounts that I flagged. I can add a little comment on the external comments that my partner is going to be able to see. And then when my partner logs into Reveal and they click on Partner Pipeline, they'll be able to see all of the accounts that I've added and they can add their own comments there. And we can say, okay, next meeting, I'd really like to go through big lots. Um, my sales rep is looking for an introduction to a specific contact. Do you have any information? Maybe we can go through the list together. It's very cool. So the, uh, the things that are showing up here, if a rep clicks get intro, does that automatically add that to pipeline? Exactly. Are, are there other, any other activities that will add them to pipeline? You might've said that and I might've missed you. Yeah, there, there are. So really good questions. So when you're in 360 degree mapping or also individual account mapping, you can click on the account name and you can add it to your pipeline. Perfect. Um, this will be considered a bookmark. Um, you can do this from the weekly digest as well. Um, but yeah, that's how it gets added to pipeline. There's also, um, if we go into category, there's uh, also from CRM. This is specifically for Salesforce. If you're already tracking uh, partner sourced and influence on your opportunities, you can automatically link that to reveal and it will be added to your pipeline. And then the last one is partner referral. So if, for example, Levenue has found an account, they think it would be a great fit for me because we have that type of relationship, they can refer it and I can choose whether I accept or decline to add it to my pipeline. And then if I accept it, it will show my pipeline and the category will be partner referral. I love it. So if you're having, uh, you know, sort of attribution reporting issues, this is kind of a way. So I, I know for some people, their reps have to manually or someone has to manually in Salesforce say that a partner was attached to a deal. And sometimes that doesn't happen, even if there was partner involved. And so this kind of gives you that backstop, that ability to say, well, hold on a second. I see that there was an intro made here. And then you can go in if that's not already, you know, uh, tagged in Salesforce, you can go in and, and make that happen because you've got some activity, you've got somewhere where it's measuring things that often don't work their way back into the CRM attribution. Exactly. And that's one of the huge benefits. So, so question 
excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, one of the questions we get a lot is, why should people click on Get Intro um, from CRM when they could just go directly to the Slack Connect with the partner? And the reason is tracking. So here you're making sure that everyone gets visibility and the partnership manager, so the person who's owning that relationship, is able to track what's going on without needing to be the gatekeeper and the bottleneck. So you can track it and you can cross-reference and make sure that all of your reporting back in CRM is up to date. So you are tracking that partner attachment. Yeah. And for some, you know, I've I've recently spoken with a handful of um, you know, sales leaders who are actually setting goals. Hey, we want X percent, you know, uh, partner attached from our reps. And so to be able to say, look, you've got to be, you've got the button. It's right there. You've got the partners right there. Like if you're not at least making the effort, you know, we, we know that it improves the win rates. We know that it improves all of the outcomes. So if you're struggling to hit your number, I should start to see more of those get intro requests. And then if you find that there are other bumps along the way during that process, great. But at least that signifies that the AEs recognize the need to run these nearbound plays and they're trying to, and you can measure that. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to, um, to share uh, feedback on people's requests. So when people ask for help, whether it's Intel influence or an intro, make sure you go back to them and you give them an update on their request, um, whether it's good or bad, just so that they have that feedback loop and they can understand, okay, when it does work, it's really powerful, share the successes, and they are encouraged to keep doing the same thing over and over until it becomes a habit and they don't need to think about it anymore. That is such a great point. Yeah. Uh, Jared mentioned, I think in the blueprint and in a session before that the partner manager's job is to build trust and maintain those relationships. And the you know sales rep's job is to sort of tap into that trust, transact that trust. But after that has happened, that partner manager, making sure that they're like following up, letting them, that you're, you're getting two-way communication so people know the results and what's actually happening after these things. And you're talking with the partner and saying, hey, thanks for that intro. Here's what happened. So everyone across this whole process gets to kind of see when things are working and when they're not working. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. So I guess now if we, if we can, I'll show you how the flow works from start to finish so you can kind of put the pieces together of what I'm talking about. Let's go. So I will go back to Salesforce. I'll use this as my example. And so let's pretend that I am a, a rep and I'm working on, a, on an account. So here, Burlington Stores is actually a customer. So this might be a company. So I talk a lot about prospects and trying to source um, opportunities and deals. But this is also super powerful for renewing customers as well. So when you want as a a bit of a a bit of context, I come from a customer success background. And so I really love the CSM use case for Reveal. So it's really helpful also for CSMs to be looking at their accounts that are renewing, taking a look at the partner presence. Could a partner help to influence them to um, to start using a specific integration or to upgrade for a specific use case? Um, do they have contacts? that I've been trying to expand into that team? Do they have a contact that they can introduce me to? So partners are super relevant, not just for AEs, but also to CSMs, because also with the, with the economic environment at the moment, it's really important that you are um, assuring that recurring revenue. So here, for example, I'm taking a look at a customer. They might be renewing. On the right-hand side, I have the Realville widget. So here I'm able to see all of the partners that have the same company as a customer or with an open opportunity. And so here I can see a couple of my partners have been working with Burlington stores for a couple of years. So they probably have a good relationship, which is helpful to know. Seeing all of these partners that have this account as a customer also gives me a really great insight. It gives me intel into the tech stack of my customer. So if I have an integration with Charming Charlie, uh, I know that Burlington Stores is already a customer of them. So how can I help them to get more value out of our tools together um, and make them stickier as a customer? So that's a really get, great use case. And something that you'll see here as well is uh, next to each partner's name, you can see whether the get intro is going to be routed to Slack or via email to the partnership owner and to the requester. So this also can give you a bit of information uh, does my company have a close relationship with this partner? Typically, if there's a, a Slack associated with it, it could be a good, uh, could have a healthy relationship. 
What's so the here, green check mark? Oh, there you go. Yeah, the green check mark means that I've actually requested an intro um, from this partner for this account. So you can also keep track as well, specifically um, when you look at the widget, whether you've already requested help on that account. So here, if I click on my partner name, um, I can see the tags associated with that partner. So I can see that Levenue is a partner based in France and it's a technology partner, which could be very helpful for me. If I'm going after specific um, help, so maybe it's an open opportunity for me and my partner and I see the tag there for co-selling, that gives me the indication that my partner might be able to help me to go into it together with co-sell. And here, um, you are also able to see if you have contacts in common and also if your partner has contacts at that company that you don't yet have. So as a customer success manager, um, my goal was always to expand and ensure adoption of my accounts. So here, if I can see that my partner is working with a different team that I haven't managed to crack into yet, they could help me with some intel or an intro there. So here I've taken a look at all of this information. I can click on get intro. Of course, get intro is not necessarily about an intro. It could be anything that you're asking for. I'm able to see that my request is going to go to an external channel with my partner. Um, I'm able to see that it's also going to an internal channel and I can see that an email will be sent notifying the partnership owner. So here I can choose a specific contact and I can ask for help. I should have copied and pasted a message already. But <laughs> here you can send the intro request. Um, and basically after this, I will share my full screen and I'll show you what it looks like back in Slack. So you're going to probably see a bunch of tabs. Cool. So now if I go to Slack, I am able to see that my intro request was sent. This is my internal channel. And so here I'm able to see uh, I'm... I'm tagged because I'm technically the partner owner on Reveal. You're able to also see who requested um, the help. And so basically the requester, account owner, and partnership owner will all be tagged if they're in the channel. And they'll receive a little bot notification if they're not letting them know that they should join the channel. Here I can see the context, so the message, partner, and things like that. And then also I'm able to see for my uh, Slack Connect, um, here I haven't updated my settings, but they'll also get to see the uh, context message for Salesforce that I've sent. And here the partner um, account owner and partner partnership owner will also be tagged in the message. So they'll be notified and you can take action. So here, super great for the people that are most relevant. So for me as a CSM, maybe it's for the account executive on the other side. We can start discussing. Can you give me some information on who you work with there? or an intro to the VP of facilities. And then if I go back into Reveal and I refresh my screen, you will be able to see, and I already made a, ooh, you will be able to see the, it's taking a, a hot minute to update, but you are able to see the get intro request. So here, if I apply a filter, category is intro request. Here, I will be able to see uh, the get intro request, and you're able to see the message that you added as well. It's taking, my Wi-Fi is not very good, so it's taking a hot minute to update, but this is the type of message that you'll see. So here you can see the requested date. Um, you can also see the specific message, and if a, a contact was specifically identified as wanting an intro for. If you share your pipeline with a partner, they'll get to see all of the messages in the external comments here. Any questions, Isaac? I don't think so. I think you, I think you answered them all. I got them Good. all out at the beginning. Good. Sorry that my my internet is not very um, not very stable right now, but but yeah, it will be logged on the pipeline. You can export your pipeline as a CSV. Use that cross reference. Um, make sure that your CRM is up to date, and that you are tracking all of your partner attachment. Are any of the things in the Slack channel? So uh, after something gets posted in there, then everything is just happening in Slack. Are there things that go back into Reveal from Slack as well? 
At the moment, no. So this is one of the one of the first versions of the whole get intro flow as part of Reveal Engage, but they are things that we're looking at developing and updating in the future. And Isaac, I think we may uh, have lost you for a second. There we go. <laughs> Back and forth. I have, uh, I'm in the middle of a hurricane over here. So uh, who knows? Could be on my end. Also have my kids in the background since we're all just in the house. I could hear them very loud. So, hey, we made it. We made it all the way. Um, well, I just wanted to, to also throw out there some of the things, you know, with pipeline, there's, let's just say there's some next levels of attribution and ROI tracking and things that we are working on that I'm really, really excited about. And hopefully we'll be doing a session about some of those in the near future. So um, anything else that we missed, Sally, any other uh, best practices or anything that you've seen be uh, effective or things that you would like feedback on specifically uh, before we wrap up? No, I mean, I think that was pretty much it. There was one last slide that I was going to share. Um, which is this one, which is, this is, so I focused a lot today on get intro because it's what I'm working on a lot at the moment. So I'm not, I'm not super objective about this, um, but reveal engage here is about so many things. So it's about get intro. It's about um, communicating in the channels where your sales reps are and your partners are. So that's on Slack, that's by email. We also have tracking and attribution. So specifically for Salesforce, we are tracking your activities and get intro is one of them. And so basically at the opportunity level, we are able to help you identify if a partner was uh, potentially helping um, you to source or influence that opportunity, which is super helpful in terms of reporting. It takes out the guesswork. You're able to see the history of activities that have happened on that account. So you can say, okay, you had a get intro request and two days later an account uh, an opportunity was opened, we strongly suggest that this partner helped you to source that deal and things like that. But get intro is one of, of many activities that we're tracking there. Um, you also have the nearbound Intel. So you have things like the weekly digest that are super helpful. Um, a, little, a little teaser is actually we're working on some notifications at the moment. So updating um, Slack. So telling your sales rep, uh, similar to the weekly digest, but a lot more concrete um, information that they can action directly in Slack. So, okay, you have a, a, a new common opportunity with your partner, do this. So taking the guesswork out for your sales reps on how they can action that partner data as it happens in the moment, which is super, super cool. So I'm excited. I, I might do a session on that with you when it comes out. We're working on that. So if anyone has any feedback or suggestions, please send them through to Reveal um, and just things like that. So there's a whole bunch of things associated with Reveal Engage, but Get Intro is a strong part of that, but not just the only part. So Get Intro is not just about introductions. It's really the three eyes of Nearbound. So Intel, Influence, Introductions, and I strongly recommend taking a look at the Sales Blueprint. Super helpful. Lots of great um, tips and tricks and ideas to get your brain ticking. Love it. Thank you so much, Sally. We look forward to, uh, to having you back to, to give us some more updates as we roll out more stuff. Thanks everybody. As always, uh, we won't be here next week, but the following Wednesday we will. I think that session is actually going to be kind of a live Q and A. So we're going to field a bunch of questions that we've kind of gotten, um, and that we'll continue to get. So send those in. If you have any specific things you want us to cover, that could be anything from product related to high level strategic stuff, tactics, best practices. Um, we'll take all those questions and a little teaser the Wednesday after that, I think it's September 20th. We're actually going to have a big debate. We're bringing on oh. Aaron McGarry from Qualtrics, Sunir Shah from AppBind, um, someone from HubSpot. I'm now forgetting which person we're bringing on from HubSpot and then Jared Fuller. And we're going to debate about what metrics are the most valuable for partner managers. Is it partner attach as Aaron and Jared will argue Sunir will argue against partner attach for, I'm not sure exactly what his preferred metric is, but all of these debates about influence, partner source, partner attach. Uh, so that'll be a really fun one coming up on the 20th. So we'll see everybody in a few weeks. Thanks for having me. Feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Thank you.